What is up? It's Dakota Layden here from Destination Fear, and you are listening to the Paranomaly Zone. A ghostly apparition in the dark of night. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria! So, Patrick, I have a question for you. Ooh, I like questions. Um, well, I don't know if it's a very difficult one, but oh. do you believe in? Yes. Now, I know you have a lot of different beliefs and things like that and whatever, but do you believe in the power of the ponderable? The power of the ponderable. Mm, that's Yes. That is a tough question, Mike. Now, does this have anything to do, by chance, with the, I don't want to say rediscovery, the return of ponderables sometime in this episode? Are you, are you laying the groundwork for our listeners? Are we hyping it up too much? Well, you know, I figure if, if they have an idea that that might happen, then they can decide if they want to keep listening or not. Good point. So, Very, yeah. very good point. So as far as me believing in the power of the ponderables, you know I do. You know I do. You, of, you, you of see my reactions every single episode that you throw these terrific ponderables my way. I either, yes, uh, but- I either um, apparently roll my eyes in disgust or lower my head in disgust, mm-hmm. or I laugh. Um, I have other reactions that I'll keep secret, but um, yeah. I'm interested in what you mean by the power of the ponderables. What what lies in store? I'm intrigued. Well, you know, I have tried to find and come up with some new ponderables, but it's it's difficult for me. It really is because I've I've kind of run the gamut. I think so. I still have the notes from years ago. Years ago. And I have a lot of these ponderables here. And I want to see if I pick out some and see if you remember them or see if I get the same reaction that I remember getting from you. You know, and uh, long-time listeners. Ding, ding. Dingy bell, by the way. Dingy, ding, um, dingy, ding, ding. Um, you know, they see if they remember them or... New listeners, now, maybe are you telling, get a kick out of it. Are you telling the truth? You remember how I reacted to each and every one of these mysterious ponderables? No, but okay. I wanted to make <laughs> it sound right. good. So right. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to make myself sound stupid. No, 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 no. That, that, you do that just fine on your own. I'm kidding. I had I to take another kidding. drink of my hot tea there. Ooh, hot tea. Hot tea here. Got a hot, hot. tea there. Some good old hot Earl Grey with a wee bit of sugar, Ooh. a wee cup of tea. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, your anyway, your Irish um, blood is uh, right there. English. That too, that too. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I get it. If yeah, if I went by the English, English or the British, I should say. No, what am I? The what British, you... <laughs> the English, the Irish. Okay, what all am I? <laughs> what am I again? Who am I? Where am I? Uh... If it was if it was Irish or my Scots Irish descent, I would say. I'm having a, a wee spot of Talamardu. What? So, uh, it's a it's a imbibement. Yeah, I know it's a, it's an imbibement. <laughs> anyway, so I'm I'm like you know full throttle German. So what? yes, so you would drink like strained sauerkraut juice or something <laughs> right. like that, <laughs> which I would love because I love sauerkraut. 
See, not here. Absolutely not. Yeah, but you should. Don't tell me what to do. No, <laughs> no. I have to me that just it it it. Um, I'll be honest and upfront and forthright. I've never had it, but I refuse. Really? I refuse to try it just because of its name. Oh man! Just but- just like I refuse to even try squash. Who wants to eat something called squash? <laughs> if you cook it right. It's fantastic, but I'm sure it is. sauerkraut. I mean, that should be running through your your veins. As, <laughs> My, as proud of your heritage as you are, yeah, I know. Patrick von Koffenberg. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am so serious about uh, petitioning, or I don't know, not petitioning is the right word. I would love to uh, reinstate that portion of my last name. You know, I want to become officially a von Koffenberg yet again before my time on this earth is through. I don't know if it'd be worth the effort. I don't know how long it would take. I don't know if it's even possible, but... Um, oh, I'm sure it's possible. You can change your name to whatever you want. You could call yourself number nine. I could. Number nine. Don't do Number that. nine, don't if do you that. wish. Don't, 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 please. <clears throat> I know. Do but not. anyway. Do not. No, you said that, and the first thing that popped in my mind is the, uh, is the question, the eternal question for Beatles fans, Mike. Now, what yeah. side of the proverbial Beatle aisle do you sit? You can be honest. A large, healthy portion say yay. A large, healthy portion say nay. When it comes to Yoko Ono being the demise behind the Beatles. Come on, you can be honest. We're all okay. about honesty here on the Paranomaly Zone. What I will say and what is my opinion and what I think may have happened is there was there was already plenty going on plenty of strife within 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 the quad of the beatles the quad so um they're already you know disliking each other to a certain degree you know very true you know loving each other still like like really bad brothers maybe i don't know but uh when john started saying okay Yoko is going to be in here during recording sessions and he's going to, it's going to be here every time. That was probably like the nat, the last iron nail in the casket. I, I gotcha. mean, yeah. So I don't know, you know, can, I, or it was kind of an excuse to say, okay, no. Okay. We're just done now. Very true. So. I mean, we weren't there. We don't know. Kind of like the same thing we say about all the mysteries of the earth. You know, we're open-minded to everything. We don't know. We weren't there. Yeah. And I was a young child, so I, I don't know. You know, and I can get it on a very minor, tiny, microscopic scale compared to what the Beatles were, and it, you know, because I have, I was in several highly unsuccessful bands. You, know? well, you were also in that Beatles cover band, weren't you? Uh no. <laughs> you, you you played Ringo. Uh oh yes, that's right, that's right. We were <laughs> no no no. Uh, yes, we were um, Ringo and the Stars. That's right. That's what we were. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. But in, in all <laughs> yeah. sincerity, I, we were, I was in several highly unsuccessful bands, but even on that, on that level of uns, unsuccess, <laughs> if that's even a way of saying it, you know, the, the band room, Mike, the practice, the group, it's a sacred space. It really is. Oh, absolutely. I, I can totally understand that. And, and when, when you, you bring in kind of an outside, you know. Foreign object. For, <laughs> oh, and hey, I did not mean that. As a racist thing, because that's, I take that back. No, 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 no. That's a perfect I mean, way of putting it, because that's well, a, Yeah, but I didn't mean like, well, she's a foreigner. No, I know. I mean, I, I, oh, please, people. I did not mean it like that at all. Mike, that's horrible. Mike but meant anyway, that, you know what I mean. He meant that in pure pro wrestling terms, like when someone brings in like a pair of brass knuckles to cheat to the <laughs> yeah, victory, you know. He, yeah, that's what he meant by a foreign object. <laughs> But no, a it's a uh, chair from underneath the. Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, no. So I'm. I, yeah, I'm. I. I wasn't there, but I. I kind of feel like it was, as you stated, kind of that that final nail. It was probably inevitable, and that just kind of that sealed it, so to speak. But uh, who the hell knows? Anyways, Mike, this is the return of the Paranomaly Zone. It's been a couple weeks. Have you recovered? It is time no. for intros oh in case there are in <laughs> case you are new to the program. Believe it or not, we do get new listeners from time to time on occasion. This is your weekly dose of all things. Hey, you guessed it, paranormal strange and mysterious. My name is Patrick Koffenberg, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host with the ghosts, the paranormal poster boy himself. Let's see what I wrote down tonight. The man 
whose dog gave him a new definition of the word faceplant. Mike and pain and pain. <laughs> Mike Carbno, are you okay? Are you recovered? Um, no. Very briefly, we will describe why we were out of action, missing in action last week. Yes, um, you were ill, ill, ill. I've been ill. I finally feel like I'm finally feel like I'm turning that corner. You'll there'll be three weeks tomorrow when I first got nailed with whatever the hell I got. Yeah. Well, like I said, you probably got sick from ten different kids at your yeah, job. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, close, close up. I mean, up close, one-on-one interactions with uh, kids, and they're all hacking and wheezing and sneezing right on your face. It's bound to, bound to happen. But uh, you, <laughs> you uh, had to miss out last week for a very different reason. Would you care to I, briefly uh, describe what happened to you last week? Sure. Well, okay. Uh, people know that my shoulder was and my bicep was destroyed a, a, a little while back, and I finally have my surgery date which is May 1st, they're going to do a total shoulder replacement. Okay. So uh, with that, with that, I could move my arm a bit, you know, with my other arm and well, you know, and use my hand, whatever. But so like less than a week ago, I think it was, or just about a week ago, my great Pyrenees, I let her out. I let both the dogs out, Pyrenees and the shepherd. And I always put, the cable on the Pyrenees because she will jump the fence and who knows when she'll come back. So for some reason in my, my uh, incapacitated thinking of this, my messed up brain, I put the cable on the German shepherd, which even if there wasn't a fence, I don't think she would go anywhere. And then I let them out. So here I see all of a sudden, my Pyrenees over the fence in the backyard across the alley with this like this six year old kid. So I do my best to climb over this fence that I got. Was the six year old kid fence? I push it down. Was the six year old kid like uh, doing his best jockey impersonation on top of your massive dog, or was he trying to tackle the old Great Pyrenees? What was going down there? Nope. And then we froze up. Of course, we froze up. It wouldn't be the paranormal zone without freezing up. That's my fault. My okay. Kid. Okay. Now you're back. Okay. Good. But anyway, yeah. Okay. So this little kid, he, you know, my uh, Mishka, the Pyrenees, she goes right to him and she's laying on her back, just all wagging the tail and he's petting her and everything. And so I go to her and I grab her by the collar with my one hand and my bad arm. I mean, that's what I grab her with the hand on my bad arm. So, and I was going to take her slowly back to the house well she didn't want slow whatsoever she took off and 100 plus pounds of dog and a lot of muscle flew me through the air and then straight down face planted bent my glasses up hurt my face my nose bruised my leg and retore more of my bicep i know it because it's so many colors right now and the shoulder, I'm sure the rotator cuff is messed up even more. So I figured, you know, I'll deal with this pain. I got a doctor's appointment coming up soon. I'll talk to her about it. I'll get it fixed on the first, and then that's it. But it's extremely painful. I, You know, sleeping is difficult. Everything. <laughs> anyway, that's what that is. Mike actually has his sling on again. For, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I can't do without for, it. For obvious reasons. Um yeah, you re- I remember months ago when you first described your uh, your shoulder problems. I mean, they were getting worse and worse and worse, your shoulder problems, that is. And yeah. I think you said that one of your doctors, one doctor at the time, described your shoulder muscle as sensitive. Well, not your shoulder muscle, your, your bicep. I, my bicep your was bicep, detached. It was detached and like literally like all coiled up at the top. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I think more of that happened this time. And then the 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 shoulder and the rotator cuff and the ligaments, whatever, have atrophied so many inches back that they don't have enough to pull back. But right. that surgeon, the consult with him, he said, "There's just no way I can fix it. No way I can fix it." You know. So, thank God I, for second opinions, man. Oh, absolutely. This guy, he's like, "Oh, we got to fix this." I mean, this is you know, we'll do a complete total shoulder replacement and you'll be as 
great. That just amazes so, me. They're both professionals, and one of them, they're, they're looking at the same problem. You yeah, know, and they work together. They work in the same place. I don't get it. Is it just a personal choice? It's like, I don't want to bother, and the other one's like, no, I want to bother because I want to help this guy. <laughs> I'm not suggesting yeah, anything it, nefarious yeah, is going I, on, but man. I kind of lost faith in the guy, but yeah. the guy that is going to do the surgery, I've heard he is one of the best Good. In, in shoulders and stuff like that, so it'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah, same here. I, I'm looking forward to Mike having two working limbs yet again. Well, four working limbs. Two of them are arms, and the other two would uh, be your legs. Well, now all I need is that fifth <laughs> one to start working. <laughs> that fifth appendage. Oh, okay. I see where you're oh, going. No, I'm just kidding. I'm you just have to kidding. go to a totally different doctor for that one, Mike. So I'm not that old. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I am, but still. Anyway. <laughs> well, it is good to see you. It's good to be back. We apologize to anyone who may have missed their weekly dose of the Paranomaly Zone. Uh, we're here. And guess what? We're totally unfocused tonight. Shocking. Like but, usual. But like boy, usual. We, got some, we, we got some great stuff to talk about, though. I mean, we're going to go back to some neat things that we've done, some great, maybe oh, sure. some great shows that we've had. Uh, you know, It's going to be, be cool. It's going to be cool. And um, afterwards, we're going to record another Patreon-exclusive episode as well. You're still up for that, right, Mike? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, we haven't done one since like January 20th. Again, apologies for that. But man, it's been kind of an effed up new year as far as just being weird, wild, and wacky and just kind of yeah. now getting settled into it uh, for various reasons. But it's good to be back. We hope you all enjoy this episode. It's going to be an unfocused, kind of a throwback to the Ultimate Route podcast type days. Not as far back as the Nonsense Cast radio nonsense, but similar. A little bit? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Uh Kind of, but not, but a little bit more conservative. <laughs> I've got me you on know, my professional notes here. I got written down. I mean, we have some pretty interesting uh, lists. I got weird but true facts, uh, maybe some disturbing facts. Uh, Mike obviously mentioned the return of the ponderables. I do have some, well, punny and funny Bigfoot jokes. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> Funny or not funny? Uh, I uh, I do have a uh, question to received from a listener today that I want to tackle. It's pretty interesting. Thank you so much, Angela Don, for replying to that. Uh, you're the only one. Everyone else sucks. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but um, it's a great little great question she sent us. Um, Mike mentioned you want to you know maybe throw back to some courthouse investigation convo. I mean we got all sorts of stuff we can dive into here. Mike, how would you like to start? I mean, this is just a random, fun, weird episode. Is there anything you want to start with, or should you just uh, leave it well, up to uh, leave it up on a whim, so to speak? What What are you vibing? What uh, are you feeling? I I think uh, you know, take it second by second. I think. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> kind of how you take life. You know, you just yeah. you just never know. You just I tell you what, know. I could do. I could I could open up my barrel of monkeys and see what happens. <laughs> there you go. I got a. That's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah, literally, it, it's a little barrel, and it says the, barrel of monkeys yeah. on it. These are the same, well, they're not the same, same ones, but they're from 1968. It's like, it's like when I, oh my goodness, look at played those with barrel of monkeys, that's what they were. But anyway, that's, that was a stupid thing to talk about. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> what was it? Well, let's just start with Angela Don's question, because I yes, guess. Yes, let's do that. She deserves that. Yeah. Um, and. I'm assuming you still have yet to mail out her grand prize. <laughs> it, you know, I tell you, it's going to go probably Tuesday. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Yes. Um, yeah. And boy, I got some neat stuff in there. I hope she likes it. I hope she likes the eclectic, you know, collection that's in there. Cause I, I collect so many different things and there's a little representative of many different things in there. So anyway, go ahead. Awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, well, I threw out there uh, on, on, on the Twitch earlier, I was going to say, does anyone have any questions for us today? Anything goes, you know, it's a very randomly focused episode. And uh, she replied immediately and she asked, do you recall the moment you were first introduced to true crime and why did you find it so fascinating? So thank you very, very much, Angela, for that awesome question. Uh, yes, actually, um... For me personally, I do have a moment in time that I can pinpoint, and that goes back to when I was like 10 or 11. Um, I don't know what that says about me, but without any further ado, Mike, believe it or not, I used to be a young man. Like I said, I, I was 10 or 11 at one point. For a short time. For a short time. For about a year. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, 
back in 1986, I believe, 86, maybe 87, I want to say 86, there was a short kind of, I don't know if it was a two-night series, mini-series, or maybe a three-night mini-series, don't remember what network it was on, but it was a very well-made for television program called The Deliberate Stranger, and it was focused on the evil entity known as Ted Bundy, starring one Mark Harmon as mm, yep. Ted Bundy. Um, I vividly, Other of Angie Harmon, I believe. Oh, well, thank you. But anyway. <laughs> I vividly recall watching this with my mother um, in the living room, and I'll admit it, I loved Ted Bundy. I, I It was probably the Mark Harmon performance. It was probably, you know, the, the handsome nature of Mark Harmon's face, you know, p- particularly back in 1986. Who knows? But you said I, you loved Ted Bundy. I did. Now, let me explain. Yes, please. Let me explain. Now, I still have this lifelong, uh, I guess you can call it, passionate interest in the evil entity known as Ted Bundy. And it was sparked from this movie, this particular, particularly probably this performance. Mark Harmon and the director did a fantastic job, in my opinion, and probably in a lot of people's opinion, of portraying Ted as that charming, affable, likable person that just, I'm going to be redundant here, charmed people out of their socks. You know, that was... Out of their lives. Out of their lives. Exactly. Well said. People liked him. I just, I don't know if it's easy or difficult to understand that it's well if he's you know he hadn't snowed i mean you know there is a point that came where that all ended for him obviously so oh 100 percent you know but it's still fascinating like you hear interviews with people involved with him the re- the investigators the detectives right. you know people who interviewed him up until the day of his death you know when he was in prison for the last you know however many years of his life even they were saying, you know what? We liked Ted. I mean, we know what he did. At that point, they know who he was. His psychologist, you know, um, who did an extensive study on him for reasons of his trial. Um, he himself, in his book, specifically said, I liked Ted. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm talking to this man. I'm trying to decipher how his brain works and after talking with him and knowing everything he did i liked him i can't lie i like the man so sick bastard i guess long story (laughs) short too late i thought that the performance was perfect because i liked mark Harmon as ted bundy therefore i liked ted bundy and i was like oh how can he be such a bad man he's so likable so i guess that was kind of my spark well, I know, the, uh, yeah, I can believe that, but it, you know, also, you know, why you would feel that way and think that is because you have the mind of a child. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. That's okay. No, I deserve that. I get it. I, I, I watched a little bit of the Thunderdome a few days ago. Just today? Oh. No, a few days ago. Oh, a few days ago. A few days ago. Al Carlisle. God damn, I was, I'm sorry. I, I'm just speaking out loud. Al Carlisle was his psychologist's name. I finally popped in my brain. Um, wow. Yeah, because I, I have a, a book here. Isn't it? God dang it. Now I want to make sure. Hold on, boys and girls. Play the Jeopardy music in your head. I want to make sure that it's Al Carlisle. I hate being wrong uh, during episodes, so I'd rather waste people's time by making sure that I'm right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Al- there was a Carl Stanley instead of Carlisle. <sighs> I don't know. I'm just trying to help. Al Carlisle, yes. Psychologist of the Utah State Prison. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So anyways, I think, uh, long story short, very winded, long-winded answer to Angela's awesome question. Would you have a particular moment, Mike, Hmm. of what sparked your interest in true crime? Or or would you have to to think about that for a little bit? Uh, Let's see. Boy, yeah, I would have to think about it because it's not... It hasn't been a huge thing for me, but, you know, since you and I have been doing some true crime episodes, um, especially, you know, the Ted Bundy episode with uh, Chris Jericho, I mean, oh yeah, that just, just 
you know, I just was really little known fact during that really, entire yeah. that entire interview. Mike was pantsless during that entire interview. Um, are you okay that I revealed that fact? Mike? Well, I it's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, is it is it pantsless or pantless? What is it? Let us know. Listeners. As long as you don't call it pantyless, I'll be fine. Well, what's wrong with that? Maybe it was pantyless. And mean, he is kidding because I have always got some sort of panties on, lower covering on of some sort. So you know, I what? have a special loin cloth that matches one of my scallies. Oh, so. that's now now that's a sight. That's you know I I I can imagine. I haven't seen it yet. You um, won't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. You're not going to pull it out during our next invest. That sounded terrible. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you're, you're not going to wear it during our next, uh, I don't know, haunted house <laughs> stroll, our next dalliance towards the Sally house. Yeah. Mike, Mike puts on his loincloth, and I'm, <sighs> I'm wearing my paranormal panties. <laughs> I'll, I'll put them on just before we sneak down to the basement. I think uh, we just lost every listener who was tuning in. <laughs> yeah. I just well, said, hey, we are going back a little ways. So. I just said paranormal <laughs> panties. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to go on further from that. So you have no need to. <clears throat> well, Mike, just to let it go. You brought up our courthouse investigation earlier. Again, this I is did. very random. We're going to go all over the place for this episode. So, first and foremost, what are you referring to, and why did you bring it up? I'm curious. Let's let's walk down memory lane briefly about. Gosh, yeah, this well, might have, might have been our first official investigation way back in what 2007 or something like that. 2008. Uh, yeah, um, October 11th at eight o'clock. What year? No, have, you, you didn't write the year down on the on those notes, though. Ah, you know, I bet you that's. I'm thinking, okay. I'm thinking it was 2007, eight, something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure. Mike's frozen. He's he's frozen in thought, but that's okay because it's important that we get the, our facts straight here on the paranormal zone. And if it seems like I'm uh, killing time here until Mike comes back, because I am. You, uh, are you having? Uh, yeah, are you having a bad connection show up on your? Well, of course I am. It won't be the par- it won't be the paranormal <laughs> zone without us losing reception. I'm quite frankly getting very very tired of it. But uh, yeah, especially when you're paying well, for this, I, I pay for this crap yeah. in order to supposedly yeah. eliminate these issues. But does it work for us? Well, no. Anyways, well, go ahead, Mike. Why did you bring up this con- this? Uh, this well, issue earlier today, this I, topic. I was looking through my books that I have. I've been putting my books together next to my podcast desk so I can readily grab them. And I found the old notebook that we used back then. And uh, I found uh, Gustav Holt's uh, um, obituary story that he was found dead in the courthouse. Um you know, uh, and a timeline of things that we heard, things that we got on tape recording. Did his obituary and, officially state a cause of death, or did it just say was? Uh, because did we not see. believe that he had hung himself at, in the in the court? Like yeah, in the, in, in the, boiler, in the room? boiler room. Okay, let's see here. Well, I could here. Should I read a little bit here? Please. I mean, it's very interesting. Please do. Okay, Ghost Hulk. I guess it's been Goost for short for Gustav. Gustav. And this was a- April 20th, 1944 was when this came out. Uh, he was janitor at the courthouse for several years, died Monday shortly after midnight. Wait a minute. He Four- took his life. 420? Mm-hmm. 420? April 20th? Uh, what the hell? What did I? Didn't you say that? Oh, yeah. A- April 20th, 1944. That's Hitler- that's the date of this uh, headline here. Hitler's birthday. Oh, well, there you go. I'm sure he had something to do with it. And among other things, obviously, but uh, okay. Go on. Yeah, okay. Okay, shortly after midnight, he took his life by hanging while in a fit of despondency while brooding over a crippled arm of which he had failed to retain the use of after an injury. Whoa, Mike, you are a reborn Gustav. You were meant. I wonder. Boy, this is crazy. Uh, In August of 1941. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Reread that, because that is that's like new news to me. Now these are notes that you had written down years ago. Well, this is actually the actual story. That's the actual the, copy of the from the newspaper. Oh, oh I re I, I take those words back. Yeah. Please reread that. I don't okay. recall that at all. That's kind of creepy. 
Yeah, but uh, like I said, April 20th, 1944 is written up on the top, but it actually happened in 1941. Um, okay, yeah, while brooding over a crippled arm of which he had failed to regain the use after an injury in August 1941. Damn. Yeah, his lifeless body was found in the boiler room in the courthouse by county treasurer Herman Gregerson. Okay, uh, so Gustav, born January 7th, 1873 in Germany. Uh, let's see. A son of Henry and Johanna Hulk. Gustav Peter Hulk lived in that country until the age of nine years, then came to the United States in 1882. Well, the same year that this house was built that I live in. So that's another interesting Another thing. interesting coincidence. So coincidence. Gustav... Okay. I guess, emigrated to the United States in 1882. Right. Uh, and he mm. settled in the state of Iowa, where he received his schooling. He was a carpenter by trade, but had worked as an engineer for many years. On September 12th, 1900, his marriage to Lena Bruce A. occurred in was that like a Canadian? Mm. Was that was that your Canadian interjection there? You said mm. you said a, or is that part? Um, that was part of I her thought, name. Yeah, part of her name. <laughs> okay, okay, that occurred in Wesley, Iowa. Uh, seven children were born to the union. The family lived in Bellingham, Narcross, Sock Center, Glenwood, and Faribault before coming to Park Rapids in April 1925. Mr. Hulk was an efficient conscientious worker and his judgment was highly respected among his associates in his home life he was a good husband and a kind and devoted father and grandfather funeral services are being held this afternoon at the baptist church reverend william long officiating pallbearers are george potter charles clay a willett a.d hinkercliff oh nick i know a.d hinkercliff oh yeah what about this next one nick brick nick brick <laughs> Nick Brick. Nick and, Brick. Yes. And E. Rooter. Interment will take place in Greenwood Cemetery. Didn't you find his I did. Grave? I yeah. did. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of yeah. kind of uh, eerie when yeah, I, was, I bet because um I wasn't intending on looking for it when I found it. Really? Because yeah. I was there, I was there um to find again. Because quite frankly, it's difficult to find them because they get overgrown. They're underneath, but the low the locale for my grandparents' grave in this massive cemetery is hard for me to find a lot of times. So I was there looking yeah. for their their grave markers, and I just happened to see Gustav's, and I was like, "Whoa, wait a minute! I know that guy." Well, I didn't know him, but well, you knew of him for sure. Knew of him. So, Mike, this was the basis. This man's case was the basis for our probably our first official unprofessional investigation at the courthouse. What memories do you personally have of oh. investigating that courthouse? Well, right off the top of my head, you know, just remembering the things that uh, we experienced, like in that one room that had the uh, military. The military artifacts? Artifacts. Uh, we got, like, boot steps coming from there. I mean, we were downstairs in the room where Gustav Hulk used to stay at times. Yeah, and that's right. Cause yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. He, it was like his residence kind of for a while. Correct. Yeah. Like when he, he'd, he'd, if he had to stay there for a couple of days or whatever, yeah, yeah he had a, like a cot down there or something. And like. that was above us where we heard what we thought was right. Boot steps. And I believe, do we have a recorder going in that room? And that was uh, one of several things that we've lost over the years. <laughs> um, I, I thought that we might have picked that up on audio, but maybe not. I'm pretty sure that we did. I don't have that on this timeline of things that happened, but I'm sure there was. Um, but anyway, and then when we were down in that room, I thought we heard some boxes shuffling around, mm. if you remember correctly. I remember you, you – know, this sounds weird. I remember you remembering it and telling me, but I don't okay. personally remember it. But I, it's yeah. – was that where the boxes seemed like they came from above us as well, or was no, that on the same? No, down in the room where we were at. I mean, okay, okay. Because we were in a place, it was a part of the room that was, it was pretty opened up, but then 
there is on the other end, there's some more stuff that was sitting over there and um, there, it's just kind of crowded. Yeah. Um, I remember being down there in that first floor and I think the only lights that we had were like the lamp lights from the parking lot outside, right? Right, right. The, yeah, the street lamp lights or the parking lot lights. was That's the only thing that was providing us <laughs> glimmers of vision down there. It was, oh man, that was fun going down there. I, re- I remember yeah. going through all those old newspaper articles down there. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was interesting. But, um, but you remember going down the stairs to get down to the basement. The first thing I see is that damn wall that was full of clowns paintings of clowns and stuff oh my gosh wow painted right on the wall if i remember right and i didn't like that i mean (laughs) but but yeah that was crazy but i remember saying something like oh thanks a lot for that yeah thank you i appreciate that i i i uh, have i have memories of sitting in the boiler room with and doing like evp sessions down there um where we thought again where we thought and believed that he had hung himself, um, unfortunately. I, mean, I remember, well, I recall sitting there doing an EVP session. Yeah, we were sitting down there on those, uh, well, we walked through the boiler room. It was a pretty good sized room. And, you know, yeah. looking up and seeing the pipes and everything and thinking, that was kind of where he hung himself from. But I remember sitting there on those stairs going down because it was almost like a sub basement that went down into there. Yeah, yes. And uh, sitting on those stairs and doing some, evp stuff whatever and we didn't get anything from in there i don't no, think nothing at all it was just very quiet peaceful very dark <laughs> what do you have written down on your notes you said you have like kind of a little like a yeah. timeline of sorts and thank yeah, you thank so, you for indulging us listeners this is like a walk down memory lane for us but it's yeah and hopefully it's somewhat somewhat interesting interesting right <laughs> um yeah and i didn't do well writing notes but at 134, there was a strange sound. I didn't say what, you know, okay. idiot. <laughs> and then there's like someone a, passing gas. That's what that was. Yeah. Now, these things I don't remember, actually, but the EVP timeline um, at 320, I have written prelude to voice. Whoa. What that means, I have, I have no idea. So we obviously picked up a voice on some of our recordings. At 340, there was voice that, and that that's. Uh. Why didn't I elaborate more on this? Probably, you know? be, probably because you thought we'd have the recordings forever. I don't sure. Know. Oh yeah, and uh, I, you well, know, a long time listeners know that I always give Mike a hard time for for accidentally losing the, that awesome EVP of the footsteps running up and down the steps of your house. But I take <sighs> I take full responsibility for losing all the recordings from our courthouse investigation yeah. because I, right, yeah. if I recall correctly, my computer. Did one of those, I'm going to absolutely crash and give you the black screen of death, and you're going to lose everything that you have stored on your computer. And right, so, and that's still the same computer you're using today, I bet. <laughs> that's why <right. laughs> I, no. re- I had it refurbished, and you know that's why it's running so smooth. <laughs> no, it, you're just letting it hang on as long as it can. Yes, it's literally dangling on a <laughs> wire right now, and I'm just, you know, it's, it's, it's more of a fire hazard than anything. <laughs> He's got, like, this duct tape all over it to keep the screen together. <laughs> just and, like my microphones. <laughs> yeah. My microphone and uh-huh. my mixers. Yeah, that's awesome. I have antennas here with uh, with styrofoam wrapped around, or not uh, <laughs> not styrofoam, uh, tinfoil wrapped around all my uh, aluminum, uh, uh, aluminum, aluminum. Foil. Yeah, yeah, or styrofoam, <laughs> whichever comes first. Well, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Uh, resume your professional notes if you have any more. Says possible sneeze. A possible sneeze. Oh my goodness! Gosh, I wish I could remember this stuff. I I kind of again remember your. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike is frozen in a face right now where it looks like he is holding in a sneeze. It actually is kind of humorous. And now he's all frozen up again, so it's it's just fantastic. What better time to take a brief time-traveling excursion? Hold on, boys and girls. We shall be right back. And we have returned from yet another successful time-traveling excursion. We apologize for that, but my laptop is being a complete asshole. And I'm not afraid to say that. Um, Can can an inanimate object be an asshole? Yes, yes, it can. Because this inanimate object is causing me undue amounts of stress um, and anger. (laughs) I can understand. 
Uh, yeah, and and Zoom and all that good crap that goes into this little thing we enjoy called the podcasting. You know, I am passionate about it. I love it. But holy crap, does some of this crap? I know. Stress me out. Well, that is stressing out. The the proper way of saying that. I don't know. I just get flustered. Oh, frustration. Frustration, 100%. But, Mike, you were talking about, before you froze, and that beautifully cute uh, sneezing face that you had. (laughs) Beautifully cute. You don't ever (laughs) describe me as that ever, ever again. But I I know what you mean. More reasons to have have, uh, video live streams going for these episodes, right? (laughs) Absolutely. The listeners can be viewers as well. Well, they'd be much more entertained, I think. And we have had... People say, you know, they would know. love to see us more. I know, I know, I know. And, and and again, that's on me. I could do it. I just, we need to find, I need to find a, gosh, what's the way of putting it? Kind of, well, a manner of publishing these things that doesn't take 24 hours and then causes my computer to crash. Or again, my asshole computer decides, decides to crash after YouTube freezes on me. And it's, oh my God, it was such a hassle last time. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, everybody. We want to do more and more videos. We really, really do. Um, it's all on Patrick. It is. Blame me. <laughs> so, Mike, the last thing you read on the courthouse notes was that sneeze. What yes, say at 4:53. you? What say you after that? Uh, well, at 5:07, uh, there was a knock that was heard. No explanation after that. Uh, 5:29, there was a rattle. Damn. At 6.30, there was a loud knock. Now, let me be clear, or let us be clear. (laughs) This isn't, when you say like 5.37 and 6.30, you're talking like five five minutes and 37 seconds into the recording, right? You're not talking like 5.37 p.m. or something. Right, exactly. Okay. Gotcha. Resume. Yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead. No, I was telling you to resume. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, let's see, uh, at 7.06, it just says there is another knock. Hmm. So. You know, another thing that we have to be, again, we're forthright and we're, 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 uh, we're honest. We're clear. Um, we. And don't forget forthright and, again. Uh, well, I did say that. Yeah. I know. I just wanted to hear it again. <laughs> we would be remiss to say, or not to say. That there were people in the top floor up in their right. office building because mm-hmm. we could not be in that courthouse by ourselves. Right. They didn't trust us enough. Um, but which I don't blame them. I mean, that you can't just yeah. you know, hand over a place full of antiques. Oh, know, God, no. No, 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 no. You know, but they, they were the ones who reached out to us, if I remember correctly, because we had our professional para you know or not our paranomaly zone but our para cards out yes uh out on out uh in the town on yes. various locales of business um and they found which, the card yes absolutely which reminds me um angela don shall be receiving one of those oh nice very very cool yes now am i right in that memory mike they reached out to us didn't they i i'm pretty sure yeah um, but anyways, they were upstairs. They stayed. They insisted that they did not move from their little office area. They were just right. like, they put in a, a, a movie and they put it on almost zero. So we wouldn't be hearing any, we wouldn't be picking up any audio from the movie. They weren't moving around. They weren't walking. And we were multiple floors below them right? Um, during most of the evening, if I recall correctly. But just wanted to throw that out there, that there were two other people in this large courthouse. But... I think it's safe to say that they weren't behind any of the uh, odd experiences that we may or may not have recorded back in the day. Is that fair to say That's, that? That is very fair. Okay. Okay. Continue, Mike, if you if you have anything to continue yes, with. Yes, I have just a short little bit left here. Um, we do have uh, what people have reported uh, experiencing at this place over the oh, years yeah. or whatever. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, well, obviously they report a creepy feeling. Well, you know, that can happen Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anyway. Um, things that moved upstairs in the military room, front (laughs) doors. Yeah. The front doors open and close. Um, let's see on nine 27, 
uh, it's been written here that been two weeks since something has happened. Footsteps in the military room, helmets moved in military room. And this one, <laughs> uh, this is before I, I had it in my head that you have to be called Patrick. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> it says, Pat felt significant cold spot by boiler room door. Mm, nice. Um, and also, there was a lady that was touched in the boiler room. Dang. So that's what we have for that. That's really neat that you still have those notes. It is. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't save a EVP for nothing. But boy, I have these crappily written notes. Well, like I said, I lost the audio that we got from the courthouse as well. But I do have, thanks to the old camcorder tapes that you still had, Mike. I yes. did. I digitized those bad boys from back in the day, and I have. Oh gosh probably at least an hour and a half total of all sorts of fun videos of you and I from your house and at that courthouse during that investigation. Maybe, I need to see to watch that. I, maybe I should crazy. post some of that stuff on the Patreon. It's, I think you should. Some of it's kind of embarrassing. What, what the hell? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, like, you know, you, you are just too critical of yourself and yeah. you have nothing to worry about. I mean, we were still kind of... Well, we were fledgling paranormal investigators. We were still learning. Well, do you want me to post a video of you and I during our quote unquote photo session up in your your loft at your house when we were just well, up in the attic? Up in the <laughs> attic when we were just acting like morons. Um well, I just knocked my headphones off. God darn it. I'm that a, would be interesting. I'm firing on all cylinders here. Yeah, de I, I think, definitely I think stuff from the courthouse, so I, I think I'll I'll post. Yeah. I think people would enjoy that. They'd get a glimpse of the way yeah. things were and, and how, they how much are. younger we looked. <laughs> There's all sorts of really cool reasons to give the Patreon page a shot, though. In all honesty, I'll keep this super brief because I know this is really annoying. But if, if you want to support the podcast, if you enjoy listening to us, I mean, God bless you. Thank you so much. But there's no better way to give us some signs of support, signs of positivity. Um, if you want to try out the Patreon page, no better way to show said signs of support. You can sign up for as little as a buck a month. Um, hopefully we're worth a buck a month. If not, well, you don't have to stick around. No obligations. Um, we have nearly 70 exclusive Patreon episodes, episodes you will not find anywhere else recorded just for our Patreon supporters, including one that we're going to record immediately following this episode. Um, those who are clamoring for more video content of us on, on the YouTube. There's tons of video stuff of us on the Patreon page, including a lot of video, I hate saying footage, video clips from our own personal investigations, lots of our own audio anomalies caught on digital, including the infamous, it's Debbie, not an infamous, I don't like saying infamous, but to us, our holy grail personal EVP, the it's oh, Debbie absolutely. EVP. Among several others that are, man, indisputable. Lots of really fun stuff. I just uploaded, man, what was it? The final 16 or 17 episodes from the Ultimate Rail Podcast days that I had yet to upload. We're going back to like 2016, 2017. We have a huge section on the Patreon page called The Archives, where all of those episodes going back to 2013, including the Nonsense Cast Radio episodes, are available for your listening pleasure. Now, if you really want to compare and contrast quality, go check yeah. out <laughs> go check out tonight's episode and some of our old nonsense cast radio episodes. And tell us the differences if you find That's where we'd really be embarrassed. <laughs> but hey, what better place to put them? I don't want to lose all that stuff. You want to keep them for prosperity. And I think I think it's a cool spot to put them on the Patreon page. All it those is. old episodes. So and all sorts of really cool stuff. Yeah. We'd love to see you guys give us a shot. Done with the necessary evil that is self-promotion. So, any final thoughts on our courthouse investigation, Mike? I remember it fondly, but I also obviously have forgotten a lot about it. A, yeah, I didn't remember you feeling a cold spot. Yeah, I don't remember that either. I honestly By the don't. boiler room door. I do remember, again, I do remember doing that EVP session in the boiler room and not discovering anything. Yeah, it um, felt comfortable in there too. It yeah. wasn't. I mean, it was creepy, but I mean, it wasn't like... Oh, sure. Sure. You know, like, felt like there was something around the corner waiting to jump out at us. No, not at all. Not at all. And it's it's really neat being in 
I mean, you and I are both, you know, history nuts kind of, you know, and so it's, well, I shouldn't say kind of, we both, we love history and just to be surrounded oh, yeah. by all those artifacts and, uh, you know, physical remnants from history, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And with this allegedly haunted connection to it, pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. I wonder if there's been anything going on recently at the courthouse. I know they've been renovating it, Mike. It's been closed down for really? a while. It's going to reopen this spring, I believe. Uh, we need to just even just take a trip in there and walk around. I would love to do that. Take would, some pictures and you know, yeah. maybe, maybe find some people who have been working on the renovation and say, "Hey, have you guys experienced anything?" Because that exactly supposedly, you know, stuff like that is enough to conjure up some action. So, well, I remember when we were there down in that that room where Gustav used to have his cot or whatever. You remember they had some tools set up and like a table saw and you could, they were actually doing stuff back then. Oh my gosh. That's right. Yeah. But wow. Well, I know uh, fairly recently, uh, unfortunately, and this has nothing to do with the renovation. This happened like when it was closed down, I believe, but some of the artifacts suffered severe damage because of a sewer backup in the courthouse. Oh, no. That's happened a couple times now. So um, yeah, sounds like my basement. Oh no, kidding! Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's a whole, anyway. that's a whole other issue in itself, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Well, Mike, uh, should we pull out some weird, wacky, wild, random tidbits of absolutely of the macabre, of the weird, of the wild, the random? Yay, nay, maybe. Absolutely. Oh, okay. You did respond. I was just, yay, yay, yay. Okay, I was just ignoring you. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, I mentioned that this happens. earlier. You know what some of the what is one of the creepiest to me, it's one of the creepiest possibilities one could experience while residing in the supposed safety of their own home. You know what is an absolutely mind boggling creepy possibility? Uh, a sewer back up in your basement? Yes. One hundred percent. The idea of someone being in your house. Without you knowing it. I believe they're referred to as squatters, Mike. Yes. Not sass squatters, just plain well, old squatters. That's a whole squatters. different story there. <laughs> I found this, well, I'm being redundant. A creepy list for sure. I think they made a movie about something like that. They might have. They might have. Well, there's that old classic. We talked about it before, and I got corrected and and other people were sending me information about what this movie was called the classic old stranger in the house back in the day oh exactly right um and it, it went under several different names uh, because of various releases in various countries and all that stuff but that was about a psychopath murderer who was hiding out in the um the loft slash attic of uh, i guess a sorority house and Maybe that's why that, that idea has always kind of lingered in the back of my mind as being super creepy, because I remember watching that when I was probably far too young. <laughs> and yeah, it, too young to watch it. It terrified me. We also shared one of those stories, I believe, on a Patreon episode, Mike. That could be. I don't remember the exact details. The one part I do remember is of the young daughter attempting to sleep in her bedroom, and she happened to, you know, some of those... Houses have those kind of grates in the ceilings or in the floors, you know, kind of the venting grate looking type type of deal. Right. And she was looking up at her ceiling at said vent type grate, only to see an eyeball staring back <laughs> at her. Um, and it was revealed that some person had been living inside of their walls, uh, sneaking in and sneaking out. Uh, oh, good Lord Almighty, that is this creepy as hell. Uh, do you want to hear? Do you want to hear some of these stories, Mike? I do. I'll fly through these as fast as I can. Um, this is a story of one John M. Dubois. Dubois. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Dubois. But this is about a celebrity stalker. Uh, one stalker of celebrity Jennifer Lopez was the aforementioned John Dubois, Dubuis, Dubis. I don't know how the hell you pronounce it. OIS. I, I honestly don't know. We'll call him. Du we'll call okay. him Doobie. We'll call him Doobie. There you go. Uh, Miss Lopez, Jennifer J Lo, already had an order of protection on this forty-nine-year-old man because he had a habit of stalking her. But that didn't stop Mister Doobie. I hope I. I, I does he have brothers, I wonder? 
the, the Doobie Brothers? Anyway, go ahead. You know, I got to throw out a really shitty joke once. No, I, I like it. It's good. It's, it's very good. Uh, this goes back to August 8th, 2013, when workers at Miss Lopez's house discovered Doobie on the property and called the police. It turned out... Michael that, McDonald. That Mr. Doobes... <laughs> <laughs> Turned out that Doobie yeah. himself had been living in her pool house for an entire week before anyone wow. had noticed. <laughs> Despite the fact that there had been heavy security at the house, Doobie had even posted Facebook pictures he had taken all around the property while Lopez was not at the home. <laughs> Did he uh, probably take a picture and... Of like after he took a dump in the toilet. Oh, Look, I've been here. Good God. Uh, yeah. But anyway, wouldn't that be horrible? I thought you were going to say taking a dump in her pool or something like that. But that would, oh, well, yeah. that'd be worse. Yeah, that's just that's just a very brief little example here. He was thankfully arrested and charged with burglary, criminal contempt, and stalking. But living in her pool house for over a week. Well, trespassing should have been. Just being a psycho that. asshole should be a charge as well. Is that an official charge? Well, let's make it then. That, okay. that works. Well, this next story is that of, let's see how long this one is, uh, of Miss, his name is Davis Wallman. Got any Doobie Brother jokes about that one? Wallman? No. Okay. N- no. It says here that Miss Wal- Mr. Wallman arrived at his Seattle area home one night and noticed a couple of lights inside that would usually be off. And these lights were on, obviously. Mm-hmm. Wallman, also known as Humpty Dumpty. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, oh thank you. Wall, a, a man. Uh, okay, I quit. No more jokes from me. Stick with the Doobie Brother ones. That one was actually okay, pretty good. Got it. Okay. Now, while he noted that these lights on were kind of out of the ordinary, he didn't seem to be too concerned. He thought maybe his parents had stopped by and forgot to turn off the lights, yada, yada, yada. However, when he entered the house and went upstairs, he also found a screen from a bathroom window inside of his tub. But again, for some reason, he didn't think too much of this. Well, idiot. (laughs) Until the next morning (laughs) when strange noises in the attic startled him. Now, let's go back to the screen, the screen, the window screen in his bathtub. Why the fart would that not concern you? Well, it's crazy. It would concern me. The dog did it. Yeah. The bathroom window, Mike, which was a small space, was located upstairs, but can't be easily accessed accessed without something or someone to lift a person. He jolted out of bed when he heard rummaging above him, which he knew was in the attic. Realizing the noises were weird. <laughs> As if you heard noises in your attic and said, now are they weird? Nah, I'll let them go. They're not weird. After realizing they were weird... He tried to figure out what was going on when he noticed a light was on in his office. The door was locked. So he knocked but got no response. He went to find something to protect himself, then knocked on the door again. It was then when he heard a woman's voice. The woman's voice asked, Are you Jimmy? (laughs) Good Lord. Woman replied, No, and ordered that the woman open the door. When the woman eventually opened the door, she told Woman that, Jimmy told me I could live here. God. She'd also claimed that she'd been there for three entire days. Uh, Wallman called 911, but the woman, guess what, escaped before the police arrived. <laughs> uh, she got taken back to the home. Oh, my God. He never learned how the woman entered the house, but well, she had to appeared... the screen. Yeah, through exactly. the bathroom window. But she appears to have been living in the attic for at least a few days. Wallman stated that nothing was stolen. So there's that. Nothing was stolen. Well, he could have at least, you know, let her stay for a while, get some rent out of her or something. Man, knocking on a door that's locked in your own house and you hear, Is that Jimmy? Woo! <laughs> Horrible. Uh, now this is a story of Miguel Lua. This is a story from December 2010. When an unidentified woman in Modesto, California, was getting worried. Strange things, Mike, were going on in her house. She was sure, however, that it had something to do with her ex-boyfriend, 27-year-old Miguel Lua. She was very suspicious and believed that Lua might have broken into her house. One night, the woman plugged in her cell phone to charge overnight. 
When she went to retrieve it, well, guess what? The phone was missing. She called the police. With, with what phone? There must have been another phone. Call the police <laughs> and they searched the house. In the attic, so, well, guess what? They found a Miguel Lua hiding under some insulation. Ooh, it had that a, was itchy. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Owie. <laughs> it appeared that he had been there for some time spying on his ex-girlfriend. Lua had taken the cell phone to see if she was calling other guys. Lua was, was arrested, and it turned out this wasn't the first time he entered an ex-girlfriend's house without permission. He had done the exact same thing in July 2010 and had already had two restraining orders out against him. So this guy is, this is he's a common squatter. He likes I'm squatter, yeah. He likes breaking into ex-girlfriend's houses and, uh, well, just making sure that... Then after that, getting a uh, a nice uh, liniment for the rash that he has from the insulation. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah, that was, that was a good word. Good word. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is the story, Mike, of, well, is it labeled Ohio State University student's secret roommate? Ugh. This goes back to 2013, I guess, on, yeah, you guessed it, Ohio State University, the campus of Ohio State University. It's a busy place, many people coming and going, and this is why at first the nine students living there did not think anything too unusual was going on when they noticed cupboards were, or cupboards, were left open or the microwave door wasn't closed. However, this continued happening. The students started to investigate, and it made them wonder what was behind the locked door in the basement. Mm. Had a lock. Nine people living in there, and there's a locked door, and none of them had the curiosity to ever open it up and check it out. Hmm. Hmm. Before the strange happenings, the residents believed that it was a door to a utility closet. So some of the residents got a maintenance team from the property to come and break down the locked door. When they did, they found a fully furnished room with textbooks, framed pictures, and even a sink and a toilet. That night, they changed the locks on the house. The squatter, a fellow Ohio State University student, identified only as Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. Not Jimmy. Got, not Jimmy. Not Jeremy. Got a hold of the people living in the house and asked if he could collect his stuff, which they allowed him to do. One of the residents had previously seen Jeremy, but thought he was simply just someone's friend. <laughs> Sheesh. So there's a dude living for free, you know, in their own that, little, yeah. just hanging out. That's, I mean, that's, you know what that reminded me of? Have you ever seen the movie Real Genius? Yes. I was just thinking of that as you were right, uh, uh, reading that because I can't remember what his name was. I but. can't remember either, but that one, one of the resident geniuses like literally had like a secret passageway into like their closet that went to his big giant science room or whatever it was. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was uh, very young Val Kilmer. Very young, very humorous, very handsome Val Kilmer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, moving on, uh, moving on, even though as much as we'd like to think about a very handsome young Val Kilmer. We're now moving on to Velma Kellen's squatter. Velma. Velma Kellen's squatter. In Yelm, Washington, 73-year-old Velma Kellen wasn't sure to what to make of the strange things happening around her house. She would find her back gate open, even though she knew for sure that she had closed it. She had also picked up an odd smell, which she described as similar to cigarette smoke, but weirder. Mm. When it got to be wintertime, Kellen noticed that she was having problems heating her house. So she called the repairman to come look at the ventilation. When like said, my house. Like your house. <laughs> no, go ahead. Just, um, sorry. No, that's, that's totally okay. <laughs> Interject whenever you please. I, I know. I'm, there's just too many coincidences. Uh, oh, I know. All this stuff about me and despondent over a worthless oh. arm and everything. Exactly. But anyway, 1882, <laughs> all of that stuff. Yeah. No, please interject because you know, I'm repeating myself, but I hate this turning into Patrick's story time. I really do. Okay. Now, when the, the repairman inspected the underside of Velma's house, he discovered that someone had been squatting in a crawl space and had cut the vent to heat his own crawl space, which Jeez. would explain her heating problems. In the crawl place, in the, the crawl place, <laughs> the crawl space, they discovered, shocking, empty alcohol bottles. Mm. 
Amazingly, none of Kellen's three dogs had barked or detected anyone below the house. That is kind of amazing. It is believed, however, it is unclear that this person or persons were squatting in Velma's house for one year. Holy crap. Underneath her house in the crawl space, not one dog bark. How is with that a, possible? Yeah, with a torn, tattered, dirty blanket and a uh, an old overcoat. <laughs> it's like, my God. Maybe these are really just old and just bored of dogs. They're like, we don't give a shit. We don't. Yeah, I can't go down into my basement and do anything without my dogs going crazy. You know, just imagine multiple strangers coming in and out of your house. Yeah. Where do they go to the bathroom? I mean, is there like a, a, a pile in the corner of the crawl space that... Oh, gross. <laughs> a little bit of dirt covered over it or something? You know, know, one of these cases does uh, does have an answer to that coming up. Okay. Here. Now, this is the story of one Carlo Castellanos Ferreira. <laughs> I don't know. Car we'll call him Carlo because I can't pronounce his last okay. name. Okay. Now, Carlo first melt, melt, met Michelle Friedenberg at a hospital in Washington, D.C., where they both worked. Carlo was a valet while Friedenberg was a director of physical therapy. Doesn't matter, but I'm giving you the background. Now, after meeting Friedenberg, the 32-year-old Carlo valet man person became obsessed and started, started stalking her. Of course he did. At some point, she left her keys unattended, and shockingly, Carlos swiped them. He made copies and then returned the keys without her ever noticing. Now you can kind of envision what happens. One day, good old Carlo entered Friedenberg's home and set up a camera on a desk in her bedroom. Then, whenever he would hear Friedenberg and her boyfriend come into the apartment, old Carlo would hide underneath her bed. <laughs> He, it's not funny. As Mike laughs. It's not funny. <clears throat> Carlo managed to do this for two days, two days, under her bed, before the boyfriend finally caught him. Jeez. Under the bed, Carlo had latex gloves, a change of clothes, a power cord, and condoms. Good Lord. What was Carlo doing under the bed? And how in the hell did they not notice him? Well. Uh, I was, uh, thankfully, Carlo was arrested. When police searched his home, they found six framed pictures of Friedenberg, another stack of unframed pictures, pictures, and a video from her first wedding. Carlo had broken into the house of his victim's ex-husband to obtain this material. He was sentenced to 38 months in prison. No explanation of why or what he was doing there? He's just an obsessed ex-boyfriend or stalker. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. Just one of those damn things. Uh, this is the case of Stanley Carter. 2008 in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. The Ferentz family started noticing strange, strange noises in the house during the days leading up to Christmas. At first, Stacy Ferentz just assumed that the cats or one of her three children made the noises. Well, naturally. On Christmas Day, a few things went missing, however, at two separate times. First in the afternoon and then in the evening. It was as if someone had broken into their house twice and stolen some of their Christmas presents. So the family notified police. The following day, they found footprints in the closet of one of the bedrooms which led directly into the attic. Well, there's one of those damn attics again. They, they called police again, and the police brought a dog with them this time. In the attic, they found one 21-year-old Stanley Carter. He was wearing Stacy's sweatshirt, sneakers, and Stacy's daughter's pants. Man. Okay, not, again, not funny. <laughs> but but you're, you're laughing. So. I... I apologize, but yeah. Apparently, Carter had been staying with the residents of the other part of the duplex connected to the Ferentz family's home. Uh, they had asked him to leave and discovered him missing December 19th. Presumably, that's when the Carter, that's when Carter entered the shared 
attic space. So they shared that attic space, and he decided just to stay there and put on everyone's clothes. Or, yeah. You know, that, that reminds me, like, <clears throat> when I was in the God, Air Force. there's freaking weirdos out there. Go ahead. Sorry, Mike. There is. When I was in the Air Force, uh, um, the first base housing that I lived in, it was like a single-level duplex type thing. And, and up in the attic, uh, you know, good storage area, plenty of room. And if I went to one end of the attic that would, was connected to the other house, mm-hmm. there was just a screen there that you could easily have gone through and gotten into their house. Oh, God. And, you know. Security issues. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, yeah. But anyway. Uh, Two more quickly to share. This is the story of Tatsuko Horikawa. He's an Irish man. I gathered. In 2008, a 57-year-old man living in Kasuya, Japan, was convinced that someone was repeatedly breaking into his home and stealing his food. But he didn't know if that was possible. The man was sure that he locked all the doors and windows when he left, yet someone kept stealing his food. So the man set up a surveillance camera that could send images to his cell phone. One day while he was out, he saw that an intruder was lurking about his home. Creepy. The man called the police who arrived only to find the home securely locked. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Once inside, they looked around the home and found 58-year-old Tatsuko Horikawa hiding in the closet. Turned out that the homeless woman had been living... Sorry, she was an Irish woman, not an Irish man. It turned out that the homeless woman had been living on the top shelf of the man's (laughs) closet for a year. Still not funny. (laughs) Mike's got his hand over his mouth. (laughs) Oh, man. On the top shelf. <laughs> the so she was like a, a she, tiny porcelain doll she's, type She's, a, she's a, a little Tatsuko Horikawa <laughs> living on this guy's top shelf. Known affectionately as Tiny Tatsukawa. <laughs> tiny, <laughs> tiny Tatsuko. Yes. Anyway. anyway. Uh, it seems that Horikawa had sneaked inside when the man left the house without locking the door. It is believed that the woman also squatted in other people's houses. She avoided detection mm. by being incredibly neat and showering regularly. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Watch that smell. <laughs> so she sneaks into the closet and then proceeds to climb up to the top shelf where she stays. Just, just just lays there. Just lays there. And so the guy <laughs> so the guy will open his closet, randomly throw his shoes in there or check his coat, whatever, not thinking to look above the top shelf that he's gonna find a human hanging out there. Throws a box up there, and all of a sudden, here's ow. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and last but not least, we have the story of Tracy's ex-boyfriend. Tracy, who didn't want her last name revealed, was a single mother of five who lived in a house in Rock Hill, South Carolina. In September 2012, she noticed weird sounds coming from guess where? The closet, the attic. Yeah, I, I know. And nails were popping out of her ceiling. Tracy and two of her sons went into the attic to investigate, but shockingly didn't find anything out of the ordinary. Her children thought she was just delusional, oh damn kids. But Tracy was sure something was going on and felt uneasy. One night when Tracy was working on her laptop in the bedroom, a little bit of plaster fell on her from the movement in the attic. Rats. Heavy (laughs) rats. Large, bulging, beastly rats. And then another night at 2.30 a.m., Tracy heard a loud noise and knew that someone or something was up there. She knew it. Tracy got her nephew to look into the attic. There in the back corner was Tracy's ex-boyfriend, whom she dated a mere 12 years prior. Jeez. Boy, he can't get over it, can he? Wow. It looked like the unnamed ex had been living there for about two weeks. Just 90 days before that, he'd gotten out of prison. Oh, yeah, there you go. For stealing Tracy's car. Now, in the answer to Mike's question, he said he asked a few minutes ago in the attic, they found cups full of urine and feces. I, I, you know, I was going to jokingly say urine, 
But then I thought, no, I'm going to wait because I bet that's what it is. I, I wasn't even going for the feces thing, but cups. Perhaps even more disturbing. It's they a bit nutty. Ele- anyway, oh. anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, perhaps <laughs> anyway, even anyway. more disturbing than the cups of urine and feces, they also found a hole that he had cut so he could watch Tracy in her bedroom. And you don't see this hole? How does she not notice the hole? I mean, I'm not blaming this poor woman at all, but how, my no, no, goodness. No, 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 no. This is even perhaps more disturbing. The ex-boyfriend fled and no report of him being caught could ever be found. Good Lord. So Tracy's ex-boyfriend is still out there somewhere, probably in someone's attic, pooping in oh. cups. Hmm. Crazy. But, you know, I, I want to put out a thought here. Yes. And it's just a little bit of conjecture on my sure. part. Sure. But, um, okay, so this probably happens a lot that we don't hear about or that uh, people, you know, maybe they they move along and quit squatting, whatever. But how often could it possibly be that, you know, uh, people think their house is haunted. They're hearing things in the attic. Oh, great they're point. Foot, they're hearing footsteps. Yep. Yep. And then, but it ends up being one of these people. That's terrifying, but that's a great flipping point, Mike. Well, it's a thought. That, but it's a good thought. That's, uh-huh. that's yeah. Well, yeah. I'm I'm giving you a compliment. You're not good at taking I, compliments, are you? Well, I don't come up with good thoughts that often, so uh, <laughs> I'm not used to how I to respond. What was that one? Uh, gosh, I want to say it was a Russian murder mystery. It took place in like the early 1900s. It was one of the topics that we. It was a possibility of us chatting with Mr. Jericho about before we settled on the uh, the ghost of Ted Bundy. I'm looking it up right now because I remember it was a story of a murderer was hiding out in their house and eventually the family was found slaughtered in like the the nearby barn and one of the workers, I believe a maid who had worked there, had reported hearing you know, like footsteps and, and voices and moans up from their attic. And there it is, the attic again. And she quit because she thought she was going nuts and the house was haunted. But it was this right. murderer who was hiding out in their house. Mm. It reminds me of the Velisca house. That's similar to that, too. Oh, man, yeah. that's terrifying. I can't remember the name of that. I'm not going to waste people's time trying to find it, but um, maybe before the Fascinating. Episode. Yeah, it's fascinating and terrifying. And creepy. Yeah, terrifying. So, Mike, I got some Bigfoot jokes, but I also got some weird, random, fun, wacky, true facts. You want me to just randomly tell you some weird, random, weird, weird, weird facts? (laughs) Those are always fun. I'll try and fly through some of these here because, let's see, we're coming up on about an hour and we're going pretty good here. A little bit, a little, little, little good. I'll try and find some interesting ones, okay? Um, did you know that your brain is constantly eating itself? No. This process is called phagocytosis. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine the fog I, part. I'm, I'm pronouncing it fog because I think it's pronounced differently. It's P H A G, and I don't want it to say I don't want to say how I think it's pronounced. So I'll say phagocytosis. Okay. This is a condition where cells envelop and consume smaller cells or molecules to remove them from the system. But then it, uh, it regenerates, I'm it sure. It does. It says, do not worry. This is totally harmless and actually helps preserve the gray matter of your brain. Mm-hmm. Factoid number two, the largest piece of po- uh, fossilized dinosaur poo discovered is over 30 centimeters long and over two liters in volume. Do you care to guess what turd this belonged to, Mike? Which dino created said fossilized turd? I would say a brontosaurus. And you would say that just to annoy me. Yes, but go ahead. No, this is from the infamous Tyrannosaurus Rex, baby. Mm, crazy. Not really, but thank you for letting me feel cool. Dinosaur poop is kind of valuable. Yeah, I don't know if I'd like to have one in my collection, though. I really don't. Yeah. Maybe. 
Well, it doesn't stink anymore. <laughs> no, this this makes sense. I remember reading this or hearing this a long time ago, but it's kind of a misnomer that you think water is wet. Water is not wet. It is the <laughs> objects that water is upon that are wet, not the water itself. No, that's ridiculous. No, it is not ridiculous. Scientists define wetness as a <laughs> liquid's ability to main contact, maintain contact with a solid surface. This means water itself is not wet, but can make other objects wet. Water is not wet. Is your mind blown a little bit there? I, I can't grasp that, and it <laughs> doesn't surprise me, but well, I'll it, take your word for it. And this yeah. came out of the Weekly World News, I'm sure. Well, no, no. I, in all honesty, I, I recall reading this quite a while back, and this is from sciencefocus.com. Well, there you go, and then it's all truth then. Now you're mocking me. <laughs> no. They'll mock this one. Did you know the chicken once lived for 18 months without its head? Of course, uh, and it had a name, uh, and it was actually Clucky. taken on, take, yeah, and it was taken on a on like a, like a freak show circuit or something like that. Wow. I don't know. It doesn't say anything about a freak show in here. Well, I, I've i read <laughs> something about that. Talk about another coincidence. It was actually known as Mike the Chicken. <laughs> Sincerely, Mike the Chicken's okay. incredible feet. Did you hear me that? Did, did you hear me that? Did you hear me say that, Mike? Oh, now he's no. frozen again. Okay, great. Are you there? Are we in real? Here. Are we in real time yet again? Okay, real time. No, as I joked, timing is everything. It won't seem funny to the listeners anymore. But this chicken was actually known as Mike. That's yep. That's the same one I had have read about. But this incredible feat occurred back in the 1940s in the USA. He survived this long, as his jugular vein and most of his brain stem were left mostly intact. <laughs> just kind of hanging there. Just kind of hanging it's, there. It's intact. But this ensured just enough brain function to remain. Uh, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. This ensured just enough brain function for remaining survival. So there you go. Did it? How did it eat or drink? I didn't. I, I'm assuming it didn't. <laughs> Mike, did you know that wearing a tie can reduce blood flow to the brain by almost eight percent? Sure, I believe that. Did you know, thank you for uh, the feedback. Did you know that the world's, all of the world's bacteria, if all of the world's bacteria stacked on top of each other, that it would stretch for 10 billion light years? Amazing. That's a lot of flipping bacteria. This one I read earlier and it made me laugh. This is no joke. Okay. Did you know... What the fear of long words is called? Uh, long word of phobia. <laughs> You're pretty darn close, man. I have to take a deep breath to say this word. Okay. The fear of long words is called hippopotomonstrosesquipedaliope. Okay. Hippopotomonstrosesquipapadiliope. Yeah, okay. 36 letter word. Mm. First used by the Roman poet, Hor po poet Horace. <laughs> so thanks for that word, Horace. Mm. You seem thrilled with these facts, Mike. Well, that, yeah, that just took me nowhere, but go ahead. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, I'm, I'm flying through these. I'm trying to find stuff that's fairly interesting. It says here that... Well, you're not hitting the mark yet. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, did you know that comets smell like rotten eggs? Oh, I'm sure they're much... They're very gaseous. They're very good. No explanation necessary. No. Uh, Nothing. I'm sure you knew this, but people can actually die laughing. A number of people have typically... typically due to intense laughter, causing either heart attacks or suffocations. <laughs> Good mm. Lord. That would be painful. This one, when I read this earlier, I was aghast. Chainsaws were first invented for childbirth. Did you know that? 
<laughs> no. Does it have a year on this? Uh, it says it was developed in Scotland in the late 18th century to help aid and speed up the process of symphysiotomy, which is the widening of the pubic cartilage. Oof. And the removal of disease-laden bone during childbirth. The disease-laden bone? During childbirth. <clears throat> so, is that, this like that a... That can't be right. I mean, sincerely, we created chainsaws to chop up women during childbirth to help them? What? So, so you get the right mix of fuel in there, and you got this tiny little pull cord. <laughs> <laughs> Just you can imagine this, this uh, guy trying to start that. <clears throat> anyway, oh, that I can't, I don't buy that very much. Well, this is from sciencefocus.com. Uh, there you go again. Did you know that one in 18 people might have a third nipple? I did not know uh, the ratio of people and third nipples, but that's interesting. How have you ever, dare you not know the official ratio? Well, have you ever seen a third nipple? No, I have not, actually. <laughs> I have. Ah, do you care to share? Well, um, when I used to be a CNA, I hate saying that, but anyway, when I used to be a CNA, so I say it again, <laughs> um, I was taking care of this one guy that- uh, Wait a minute, Mike, I, what, what did you used to be? Uh, a CNA. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> but uh, anyway- um, when I would bathe him in things, uh, I, I did notice this thing that was like just below like one side of his chest, like below is one of his nipples. And, and he, uh, he told me one day, he said, yeah, my doctor told me that's my third nipple. Oh, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad you told me that. I thought it was like a wart or something, but I guess Damn. it was a nipple. Damn. <laughs> Wow. I don't know if you could milk it or not, but he says it's a nipple. <laughs> that's a that's a question for all scientists out there. Can you milk said third nipple? I mean, it depends on you know what what gender obviously you are. Um, if you are lactating or not, I suppose. But uh, do all of the nipples produce? Um, no. I, okay, okay, I'm done. I, I don't want to go any further because <laughs> I'll get in trouble somehow. Well, ha have you ever? Uh, Seen the movie Meet the Fockers? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I have nipples, Greg. Greg, uh, can you milk me? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this phenomenon, Mike, though, is called, known as polythelia. The third nipple is caused by a mutation in inactive genes. Mm, I thought it was called polyaniplia. No, no, that would make sense as well. And when I say yeah. inactive genes, I'm talking about the genetic type. Get your mind out of the gutters there, everybody. Well... Mike, did you know that bananas are radioactive? Uh, is it because of a gas that they are subjected to? Well, I shall tell you. Okay. Due to being rich in potassium, mm -hmm. every banana is actually slightly radioactive. Okay. Thanks to containing the natural isotope potassium-40. Interestingly, your body contains around 16 milligrams of potassium-40, meaning you're around 280 times more radioactive than a banana. <laughs> so, wow. There you go. And don't, do, not, do not worry about being uh, overly radioactive if you love bananas because any excess potassium-40 you gain from a banana is quickly excreted within a few hours. I mean, do you, you poop it out, or it it leaves your uh, you know your, it doesn't the say of your skin. <laughs> it, it doesn't <laughs> say, but uh, we'll we'll go with pooping. How quickly does a banana poop <laughs> out of your body? Oh goodness gracious! What do you got? What else you got? Uh, I'm flying through here because we have to get to some Bigfoot jokes and we have to get to your ponderables. Um, did you know that you can you can actually yo yo in space? R I P yo yo man. Tom Smothers. Did you know you can yo-yo in space? I didn't. I, yeah. I, why would I? Why would anybody care? Apparently, it works because a yo-yo mainly relies on the laws of conservation of angular momentum per to perform tricks, which, provided you keep the string taut, 
you can apply it in microgravity as well. So well, makes complete sense. There you go. So yeah, yeah, you know, we miss out on a lot of uh, RIPs lately. Um, not yeah. not by any conscious choice and stuff, but I was always a fan of the Smothers Brothers, and and, and Tom Smothers passed away. Man, uh, maybe a month or so ago now, but he was yeah. the Yo Yo Man, uh, famous comedy duo going going all the way back to the to the to the re- to the fifties and sixties, I believe. Sixties so. for sure. 60s I, I know that sure. uh, I I remember watching it on TV actually. And R.I.P. to Carl Weathers. Good Lord Almighty, I I was shocked yeah. to see Carl Weathers passed away. Um, being a Star Wars fan, he had made his mark on the Mandalorian series. Obviously, Apollo Creed and many, many other indelible marks on the film history. So, R.I.P. And, and again, we miss, we've missed tons of them, but the yo-yo factoid reminded me of the yo-yo man. So, you can yo-yo in space. So, get to it. Got it. <laughs> You're serious. I can tell. I can tell you are. Mike, did you know that starfish don't have bodies? They got legs. Along with other echinoderms, such as such as sea urchins and sand dollars, their entire bodies are technically classified as heads. <laughs> Look at that walking head. That's terrifying. <sighs> did you know? Somebody has been constipated for 45 days on medical record. In 2013, an unfortunate Indian woman had to undergo surgical removal of a fecal mass the size of a football. It's too much curry. Too (laughs) much. I don't know. That's my uneducated guess. I'm, I'm flying through this now before we... Mike, Mike's getting antsy to get to his ponderables. So. No, I'm not, actually. I'm <laughs> totally enthralled and excited um, about what you're going to say next. Oh, I'm sure you are, as are our listeners. I know they are. Did you know that there's a planet made mostly of diamonds? I would imagine so. This planet is called, well, we have named it, 55 Concri. C-A-N-C-I-E. It's about twice the size of Earth, 40 light years away. Within the Cancer constellation, 55 Keng Cree made mostly of diamonds. Hmm. Hmm. Compacted carbon material. Now we've all felt I, we've all felt a, a state of boredom at one point or another, or quite often in our life, right? Uh, during this episode, but go ahead. That was a good one. See, that I'm was kidding. Clever. That was I'm... that was clever. I, I'm proud of you. Um, and he's so proud that he froze up again, but that's okay. Are you there? Are we back in real time? You're drinking, your, you're drinking your tea. So. Yes. Uh, did you know that being bored, Mike, is actually considered a high arousal state physiologically? Really? Physiologically? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, physiologically, when you are bored, you are in a state of high arousal. This is because when you're bored, your heart rate ash- actually increases. There you go. Okay, and it uh, it it sends blood to certain areas that because your heart is yeah. pumping. Okay, I thought, <clears throat> I thought you were going to get dirty there. I thought you were. No, gonna... I, that's as far as I was going to go. Okay, fine. This one uh, this one pertains to me because I hate how my voice sounds. But there's actually a reason why some people don't like the sound of their own voice. It's because of our bones in our head. The bones in our head make our voice sound deeper. Than they really, than it really is. So, <laughs> when I hear my voice on the podcast, I am always embarrassed. I, I am ashamed because I sound like a freaking munchkin. But I'm saying that in a, in a positive way. Now, Mike is like speaking to a person off camera. Oh, I don't. Okay. Hmm. Flying through. Fascinating facts. <laughs> oh, Mike, 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 Mike. Right, are you there? Are you okay? What's happening? Dogs. <laughs> that's just that's Mike's that's Mike's contribution to the episode. Is just every now and then he comes back to the microphone and says, "Dogs, dogs." <laughs> 
The longest anyone has held their breath underwater is over 24 and a half minutes. That's impossible. It is not impossible. The record holder for breath holding underwater was achieved by Croatian Budimir Sobat. On he was March, some type of swami or something, I bet. I, I, I really don't know. On March 27, 2021, Budimir held his breath for a total of 24 minutes and 37 seconds under water. On average, a human can hold a breath between 30 and 90 seconds. How long can you hold your breath? Oh, <laughs> less than less than 30 seconds, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. And then I start getting faint. <laughs> Just thinking about it, you get a little faint. It, things start blacking out and getting fuzzy. Well, let's not test that theory right now. Let's, no. We're not going to push it. Oh, I'm just flying through these. Of course I am. Of course I am. Uh, beavers don't actually live in dams. No, they build them. Technically, beavers live in a lodge. Yes. That they would build behind a dam. They build the dam so they have water to build their lodge and to have... Uh, there you go. Uh, ...living space. Yes. <clears throat> a little, a little place to read their newspaper, um, to kick, yep. their, kick their... Sip on a up. wheat spot tea. <laughs> That too. Oh man, alive! Let's see here. We got to find something that's kind of remotely interesting. Yeah, we're we're losing ground here, real. I quick. am. I'm sorry. Good God! No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, okay. Uh, but I, 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 I gotta find something. I gotta find something. Uh, 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 uh. No. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll eat it at that. Oh, did I say eat it? Yeah, uh, I was gonna ask, <laughs> but I decided not to. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll end it on something gross. You inhale potentially 50 separate different harmful bacteria every time you breathe. So there you go. We'll end it on that one. That's why you have, uh, have nose hairs or to keep debris out. I know. That's why I pluck mine because they annoy me. Oh, they're horrible. Hate Wait till you get older. Oh, I hate crap. Them. I hate you Start them. getting hair all over your, inside your ears and sh stuff like that. And <sighs> nope, I hate them. <laughs> I, I have every time I think of nose hairs, no one will understand this vision. But there was a moment I had at work, probably like 15 years ago, a gentleman came up to me and he spoke to me, he asked me a question, and I cannot get the vision out of my brain of this massive, massive, freaking two centimeter long, dark as the night, <laughs> sharp as a sword, nose hair. Just jutting out of his damn nostrils, almost reaching the tip of his top lip. Oh, just one man. hair. One. Just one. I mean, it looked, I've, I, oh, looked like a, the tip of a rat's tail, this dangling <laughs> out of his nostril. Now, do you tell... I, I, I didn't tell him that. Would you tell someone that, Mike, if they're talking to you and they... No, I'd, no. I would walk away as quick as I could. <laughs> Finish what the finish whatever you're saying and and I'd be gone. Oh man, alive! It was bad. Okay, quickly, Mike. Um, I'll run through some Bigfoot jokes. Some of them are funny. Some of them aren't. <laughs> okay. And then we'll wrap up with your wonderful ponderable. Sound good? That listeners are going. Thank God. Absolutely. Because we have to do it like a We have to do it like a, a flipping Patreon episode real quick here. So. Yeah. Some Bigfoot jokes here, Mike. Bigfoot jokes. Ha ha ha! Some of these are so funny. Did you know what the Bigfoot photographer said? I'm uh, having trouble focusing on my work. Bigfoot photographer. Blurry. That photos. was it. That was the joke. Blurry photos. You know. Oh, uh, okay. I got he, it. Okay. He's having problems. Focusing. <clears throat> you get it? I got it now. Yeah. <sighs> Why is it that you only see Bigfoot in America? Why? Because otherwise you would see big meters. Oh, my gosh. Okay, makes sense. You don't like that one? <laughs> I, love, I love it. <laughs> what, uh, what would you call a female Bigfoot? I have no idea. A snatch squatch. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry that I do, but uh, that was funny. 
I see, at least he got one laugh. Okay, well, I, got, I got one laugh. Very, very derogatory. <laughs> yeah, but it, was, ap- it was. I apologize. I apologize for the dirty, dirty nature of that one. Um, what is Bigfoot's favorite exercise to do at the gym? Uh, I have no idea. Well, of course, it's sass squats. Oh, yes. Uh, it was way above my head. Yeah, I, I, I probably won't be able to top the, uh, <laughs> the snatch squatch one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, alive here. Um, well, here's a joke, Mike. Uh, Bigfoot walks into a bar. And the bartender is no longer able to discern reality and spends the rest of his life in a mental institution. <laughs> Come on, laugh. That's good. <laughs> I like that one. I got a, yeah, a little chuckle out of that. That was, that Did was all right. Did you? Okay. Fine. Thank you for making me feel a little insecure. Okay, Mike. Uh, Bigfoot is like the G spot of the forest. No one can find him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, thank you. But it, it's found occasionally, so that accounts for, <laughs> you know, the few sightings that there are. Oh, oh, we all remember the the show featuring our our favorite, like a uh, Matt Moneymaker and Bobo um, finding oh, yes, yes, finding yes. Bigfoot. Well, I was rewatching the series Finding Bigfoot the other day, and spoiler alert: they didn't find him. Mm-hmm. Ah, joke. Ah, should have stopped that snatch squatch. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll end it on this one. This is, well, no, two more, two more. Do you know the real reason Bigfoot is so good at hiding, Mike? Oh, I, I hate to even venture a guess. Because he owes Chuck Norris money. Hello? Ah. Uh. Damn, Chuck Norris. Finally, finally, thankfully, finally. Is he still alive? Yeah, he is. He's still in shape, too, man. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, this one here goes as such. Researchers say Bigfoot was finally discovered and captured on a mountain trail quite recently in the Washington forest. Despite its enormous size, it proved very easy to capture due to to its low, extremely low intelligence. The head researcher was shocked by, quote, just how fat and dumb it was, end quote. The beast will be held in captivity while further research continues. In related news, your mom won't be returning from her hike anytime soon. <laughs> that, that was a good one. Okay, finally done. Mike, have <laughs> you got some ponderables to wrap up the show? Save the show. Save uh, the episode. Oh, okay, I'm, so, I'm, I'm talking far too much. We need more carbono time. Well, uh, I don't know about that, but... Okay, so these, are, these go way back, and... See if you remember any of them, or yes. if any of the area long-time listeners. Oh, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dingy, ding, uh, dingy, ding, ding. Anyway, okay, so if four out of five people suffer from diarrhea, does that mean that one person in five enjoys it? Ponder. <laughs> I, I don't remember that one. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty. Now, how do you want to do this? Do you want me to try and guess it, or are you just going to read them off to me and then I'm going to say if I recall them, or am I going to? Uh, am I trying no. to guess the punchlines? Maybe it might be too much. It might be too time consuming if I try to. Yeah, to, I to guess. I can't break it up to where there's a punchline. I think, all right, anyway. just just fire <laughs> fire away then. Fire away. All right, tell me if you remember this one. If Superman is so clever. Why does he wear his underwear on the outside? Uh, I re- yeah. And bright red. I yes. Mean, yes. He's a show-off exhibitionist. Mike, do you have bright red underwear? I do. Oh, okay. Thanks. And I'm actually wearing them right now. On the outside. Boxer briefs. No, they're <laughs> under my sweatpants, actually. <clears throat> okay, continue. Continue. Uh, okay. If, see if you remember this one. If our knees bent the other way, what would chairs look like? Ponder. Oh, for God's sake. That's a bad one. That's a bad one. I, that's kind of, oh, yeah, that's good, though. 
That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to envision this really odd piece of furniture. Yeah, I tried and I quit real quick. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, if you are cross-eyed and dyslexic at the same time, what do you get with that? Am I supposed to guess this one? This one you can. If you are cross-eyed and dyslexic at the same time, well, then you can probably read. What? You would see normal. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, let's see what I, uh, okay, why is it when you transport something by car, it's a shipment? But when you transport something by ship, it's called a cargo. <sighs> That's a good one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Hey, Mike, did you know like an old early, like um, early 1800s, phrase i don't know if you want to call it like an idiom um for describing someone who was cross-eyed did you know that was usually the phrase was if you were born in the middle of the week and looking both ways for sunday that meant you were cross-eyed did you know that no but sure that's an old old idiom from like the early why am i drawing a blank what was the whaling community off of uh the coast there. Nantucket. An Nantucket. Old, an old Nantucket saying, you were born in the middle of the week and looking both ways for Sunday, you were cross-eyed, my friend. And also, I knew a man from Nantucket. Oh, with something as long as a... <clears throat> okay, go ahead. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah, we're running out of steam here, but that's okay. <laughs> Is it okay to use the AM radio, radio after noon? Ponder. <laughs> no, I didn't well, like that one at all. You know, one thing is, I'm, I don't remember any of these, so that's good. Well, we have, are they memorable? They're no. not memorable. So, Do, do Roman paramedics... Pyra- <laughs> Slow down, deep breath. I'm trying to talk too fast. Do Roman paramedics refer to IVs as fours? I, I, yep. Uh-huh. <sighs> Ridiculous. That's, well, it's okay. I, I, I get it. Okay. <sighs> okay, if someone invented instant water, what would you mix it with? Ponder. I, I have no response to that one. Well, it doesn't matter because water isn't wet. It wouldn't. It what, isn't. What, what it do is you not. do? And that's a fact. It, it, <laughs> it makes the mixture wet. That's what it does. It, it changes it, it does. its, its, its uh, make. It totally, uh, whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyway, Mike still uh, doesn't buy the water it not being wet. Thing. Well, well, but it's scientifically proven. So, yeah. what does Geronimo yell when he jumps out of a plane? <laughs> oh, no. Me. Hmm. Not so much. Okay. <laughs> if the front of your car says "Dodge" on it, uh-huh. do you really need a horn? Ponder. See, even his dog hated that one. But, you know, I guess if you're telling people to get the hell out of your way, dodge! I mean, you don't really need a need a horn. I needed a horn the other day, and it didn't help. A flipping blind old lady just pulled right out in front of me and at the roundabout, going about 45 miles an hour, coming out of the, the, the highway. I had to stop in the middle of the roundabout, blasting my horn at her, and Jesus doesn't even notice me. Oh man, that's yeah. that's yeah. Do blind Eskimos have seen eye sled dogs? <laughs> Ponder. Uh, that made me laugh. That was a good one. <laughs> <sighs> okay, if white wine goes well with fish, do white grapes go with sushi? And I that doesn't even make sense to me. <sighs> yeah, th- th- just move on. Move okay. on from that. <laughs> I have no comment on that one either. Okay, so if someone... Hold on, hold, but before you... Blah, I'm, blah, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry for interjecting and interrupting, but I'm good at it. Please tell me you don't like sushi. I love sushi. Oh my God, we're not friends. Well... Moving on. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, okay. okay, we're still friends. We're friends. We always will be. Just I know that. Don't ever mention sushi in front of me. I will vomit on your shoes. Uh, yeah, I know you wouldn't appreciate that at all. Okay, <laughs> if someone with multiple personalities threatens to kill himself, is it a hostage situation? 
Ah, <laughs> that one I do remember. That one's kind of clever. Okay, that's kind of clever. Yeah. And now, now think this one through. Just before someone gets nervous, do they get cocoons in their stomach? Ponder. No. I I like it, but it also made me sigh. Yeah, well, okay, okay, just a couple of deep thoughts here, okay? Yes, I like deep thoughts. Um, these are actually, I think, Jack Handy ones. Oh, nice. <laughs> ah, let me see. You kind of sound like Jack Handy a little bit. Do I? Yeah, just a little bit. If you go flying back through time and see somebody else flying forward into time, into the future, it's probably best to... Avoid eye contact. <laughs> hmm. uh, I hope some bug never bores a hole in my head and lays its eggs in my brain. Because later you might think you're having a good idea, but it's just eggs hatching. <laughs> Dog. Dog. Oh man, oh, you're gonna have nightmares about eggs hatching in our flipping brain matter now. That's lovely. Well, I'm sure it really happens. Thanks, Jack Handy. Friendship is like peeing your pants. Everyone can see it, but only you can feel its warmth. <sighs> can we wrap it so, up? That is where. Oh, wait a minute. See, the dog is getting anxious too. So he's like, You guys I got a Patreon episode to record. Yes, right. I told my girlfriend she drew on her eyebrows too high. She looked surprised. <laughs> uh, time flies like an arrow. Fruit flies like a banana. <laughs> I'm done. I am done. And with that, <laughs> that was those are pretty good though. Those are yeah, good. they were interesting. Let's put it that. Way. Well, I had some sincere giggles in that one. That was I, I yeah. enjoyed that. That was good. Well, awesome, Mike. This we somehow made it through. Um, believe it or not, I hope and made, uh, most of the listeners made it through. Yeah, that's oh my gosh. If you if you made it through, uh, we'll pay you a dollar. How's that sound? Yeah, and and let us know. Hey, if you enjoyed this quite yes. a bit, you know, we can we can throw this in once in a while. Absolutely, we're always <laughs> looking to um, you know improve the podcast. You know, we believe it or not, we we do try to do such. a such a thing uh more feedback more interaction would be awesome just let us know if you enjoy kind of silly relaxed laid back episodes like this as much as our focused episodes you know on all things paranormal strange and mysterious and our deep dives into the into true crime every now and then uh let us know what you guys think because uh, that is true we want you to stick around we want you to enjoy what we do mike damn it before my computer crashes again uh huh. Time to sign off for tonight. We are going to dive right into a Patreon exclusive episode. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. We hope you lasted the entire episode. We hope you enjoy what you heard, Mike. And tell them what do our paranormal friends need to do, my friend? Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>